For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This, my friend, is the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts. Those of us who are born again, blood-bought Christians, not in name only, but this is the love of God, that he died for the ungodly. While we were yet of no strength, had nothing to offer God, but he died for the ungodly. We are by nature God-haters, but God died for God-haters. This is what we rejoice in. This is the hope that we have. The gospel that's preached in many modern circles and many modern quote-unquote Christian churches today that says God loves you and has a great plan for your life and wants you to have your best life now, friend, that has nothing to offer you. For you can have all the success that your heart desires here and now. You can have all the money that you ever imagined. But you are still going to die. Ten out of ten people die. It is the great statistic that none of us will escape this life. All of us die. It doesn't matter how much success you have. And Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 16, that what profit a man that he could gain the whole world but yet lose his own soul? So that false gospel that God has a wonderful plan for your life, that he wants you to have your best life now, and they tell you to come to Christ for that reason, it has nothing to offer you because it is empty. You will die. And then what? Do you think you'll be able to offer God your money and success to atone for your sin? No. Friend, he is a just God that will not be bought. God cannot be bought. He cannot be conned. God cannot be conned into sweeping sin under the rug. He is much more just than an earthly judge. And the truth is that the real gospel of God's word has much to offer you. Yes, friend, it may not appeal to your flesh. It may not appeal to the sinful desires that you have. But it does appeal to your desire to live. For the Word of God says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life. And as it says here in Romans chapter 5, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. That's the message. That's the message that we proclaim, that when we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for the righteous. The righteous said they didn't need Christ. Many of you say that today. I'm a good person. I don't need Christ. I'm good. Friend, there is none good. You are not good. God knows your imaginations. He knows your thoughts. He knows your wicked intentions. None of us are good. Christ died for the ungodly. But those who point to their own self-righteousness, they say, we don't need Jesus. I'm good. I'm a good person. But when you understand that you're not good, when you can comprehend this, friends, please be reconciled to God. When you can comprehend that, no, you're not good. You're not good. You're a wicked sinner just like the rest of us. And keep in mind, friend, it doesn't matter that we're all sinners. It doesn't make you any less guilty. Because God does not judge on a learning curve. He judges according to his law in the strictest sense. When you understand that you are a sinner, you're not good. And that you have broken God's law and the wrath of God abides on you, then you can truly understand. Romans 5, verse 6, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for the unrighteous, for sinners. Until you understand the former, that, that you fall into that group, that you are a wicked and vile sinner who has wicked imaginations by nature, you cannot understand this verse. You will not be able to comprehend the gospel. You have to understand that you are a sinner who's broken God's law, a holy and just God that will not sweep it under the rug, 
that you do not deserve the access into God's grace, but he gives it to you if you will come by faith. For scarcely a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, before I even knew him, before I knew that I needed him, when I was a God-hater, he died for my sin. He died. Before I could do anything good, before I could choose him, he chose me. When we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. This is the message that ought to be being proclaimed in the church house. Not that God has the best life for you now, that he has a wonderful plan for you. Not that you need to come to Christ because he's going to give you earthly possession or an easy life. None of the apostles had that, friends. Paul was twice shipwrecked. Thank you, friend. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Paul was twice shipwrecked. He was imprisoned. He was reviled. He was hunted by the council. All of the apostles died a martyr's death, except for one, the apostle John, which God kept him alive even though they tried to kill him. He was, he was imprisoned on an island by himself, the island of Patmos, where he wrote uh, maybe the epistles, I'm not sure, but where he did write the book of Revelation. And he died an old man. You see, friend, I'm not here to sell Jesus Christ to you. I'm not here to tell you to come to God, come to Christ, put your faith in him, he'll give you an easy life, things are going to be much better, because I don't know that. Yes, we will have peace and joy. That is, that is a fruit of our salvation. That is an effect. But it's not a drawing card. It's not why you should come to Jesus. You need to come to him because he offers you the door of escape of the wrath of God. 